we felt the risk idea was so obvious that every, all the major industries will pick it up and uh, trample us underfoot. Um, what was surprising um, was that it took the major companies a very long time to even think risk was worth considering. Um, and, and so we got at least a five year head start over them. So we got this processor and we thought, well, that works rather nicely. It's quite cheap. We can just make these and put them in our desktop products. Um, we thought, well, actually, this works sufficiently well. It would be quite nice if we found some other uses. And we did license it to VLSI Technology in 1987. And interestingly, it found its way into a radius graphics accelerator for the Apple machines. Apple II, I think it was. So Apple started using ARM through indirectly much earlier than they thought. Um, but we never really thought we were competing with the big boys. We just thought we had a, a niche that we could possibly slide through. Um, and when Apple came knocking on the door, that, which was actually after I left Acorn. I left Acorn in August 90 to come to Manchester. And it must have been a month or two after that. Apple came knocking and saying, we have this Newton product, we've been working with the AT&T Hobbit, but actually we think the ARM is better suited. But we're not that happy with the ARM being owned by you know, a competitor. How about we set this up as a joint venture? And of course, they were knocking on open door. Acorn had been trying for a couple of years to offload the overhead of supporting ARM development from its own product sales. Uh, and so the company was up and running in Swaff and Bulbeck by November, which is a remarkable rate of progress. Um, even then, the people that formed ARM, um, Robin Saxby was brought in to lead it, but the people that formed the core team were the people that, who I'd worked with at Acorn, and they were all nervously laughing about you know, Robin Saxby's vision of world domination. Um, I mean, Robin was firmly of the view that you had to think this was going to be a global standard because that was the only way you could succeed. In processors, you either take the world by storm or you disappear. Um, but I think it was quite some time before even his own colleagues started to buy into this view. One of the interesting observations, of course, is that although we now think of Newton as a failure, it is the Newton that made ARM. Because then, as now, the Apple brand was a about the biggest brand in the business, and ARM was supplying Apple. And therefore, that opened all sorts of doors. Um, they got licensees signing up, almost queuing up, just because of the Apple name. And by the time it was beginning to become clear the Newton was not going to succeed, it didn't matter so much. But for the first few years of ARM, it was crucial. In 95, they got the Nokia business, and uh, through Texas Instruments, I think, and you know, since then they've never looked back. Nokia were the biggest. They were the biggest brand, certainly in phones on the, on the planet. Nokia was by far the biggest brand in, in mobile phone handsets in the mid '90s, and getting that brand basically, <coughs> um, you were made. Now, this is not to say that that the company hasn't had to work very diligently at maintaining and and uh, improving that position. And mobile phones are not everything. Um, that they sell. In fact, I think only half the, uh, the, the 12 billion arms shipped in the last year went into mobile phones. So that means 6 billion went somewhere else. Thanks to Squarespace.com for sponsoring this episode of Computerfile. And if you go over to Squarespace.com slash Computerfile, slash Computerfile, you can build a website with their easy to use and very intuitive tools. They've got state-of-the-art technology which ensures stability and security and computer files might want to check out their developers platform at developers.squarespace.com. You can start building that website today without even entering any credit card details and when you do make your first purchase, if you use the offer code computerfile, you'll get 10% off. So thanks once again to Squarespace for sponsoring this computerfile video. The company that was running most parallel to the risk thinking was actually in Moss in Bristol with the transputer. Now, if you look at the philosophy behind the transputer, um, simplicity is writ very large. Um, but their approach to simplicity was different from risk. It's the, the transputer is not 
inspired or influenced by risk in the way that you know, risk was arms middle name when it was the acorn risk machine